Hi, I'm the Beer Duchess with Craft Beer Hound, here to bring you up to speed on this week in beer. Craft Beer Hound, we're changing the way the world looks at beer by offering great beer merchandise that's worthy of the craft beer name. We've got everything that you could imagine for uh, any beer lover on your Christmas list, or um, maybe for yourself, because you do deserve something awesome. So this week we got some new t-shirts in stock, um, we've got awesome bottle openers, all kinds of artwork. Uh, the top seller this week though is the Bottle Cap Collector, um, which is selling like crazy. So go check it out at the website, craftbeerhound.com, cool beer essentials for the discerning palate. And now, on to the news. This week, November 27, 2013, our shout out goes to craftbeer.com. They have an article this week entitled Thanksgiving Craft Beer Shopping List. Um, it's a really great article that uh, kind of helps you figure out what might go well with um, your turkey dinner and also gives some, it's all broken out by style. So if you read through it and you know that you like this element in a beer or that element, you know it'll help you figure out what style you might like. And then they have a bunch of different examples from across the country. I thought it was a really great article. I'll throw it up on uh, the website for you to have the link, but it's at craftbeer or craftbeer.com. Um, but it will also be on uh, on my blog page at thebeerduchess.com. And the hot topic this week is Lost Coast Brewery. They are expanding. Lost Coast, um, this is an article I found on Beer Pulse. Um, they announced this week that Lost Coast will be building a 600,000 barrel a year brewery in Eureka, California. Um, Lost Coast is in Eureka now, so they're, they're going to stay where they're at. They really um, have always tried to help Humboldt County uh, grow and, and have give people a reason to come visit. Uh, this facility is going to help this brewery quadruple their output, so it's a really big step for them. I think this is awesome because I've always loved Lost Coast ever since I remember, you know, seeking out craft beers, they were on the top of the list. And in fact, they still make my very favorite brown ale, the Lost Coast Downtown Brown. Uh, if you haven't seen or picked up any of their beers, I really recommend it. They do good stuff and, uh, and they have kind of a fun story. It's, it was a brewery was started by two ladies back in 1990s when the brewery actually started. But uh, Barbara Groom was a pharmacist and Wendy Pound was a family counselor. And they were just friends who in 87, 86, I think it said, uh, started talking about maybe what it would take to put together their own brew pub. And, um, you know, they took their time doing their research and, and they actually bought a castle to get started. And... Uh, and anyways, it was a fun story, and they're, they're really expanding, and I just think it's pretty cool. So uh, if, you, if you haven't checked out Lost Coast, please do. And, um, and cheers, ladies. Congratulations. And for anyone who missed it, here are some great beer releases that have just happened or are happening now. And so I wanted to make sure that you don't, you have these beers on your list to look out when you're beer shopping. We've got a Deschutes Abyss. Uh, the Abyss comes out every year. It's one that, um, that ages really well, and it's just a phenomenal beer. So if you see Deschutes the Abyss, please pick it up and uh, maybe pick up two and wait about a year to <laughs> to drink one. Um, it's one that we've done now for years. We've done verticals, and I think we usually have two or three years worth of, uh, of abysses to try side by side, and that's just a really fun one to do. It's very, um, it's a big beer. Um, you'd have to be a big beer drinker to, to like it, but um, it's very roasty and uh, just delicious. It's I've never been disappointed by that beer. Then uh, Anchor Christmas Beer is out, which is another one that we've done verticals on year after year, and I think we're going to have uh, maybe a four-year four, four year vertical this year. So I think what this is 2013, 12, 11, 10. So we, we have, yeah, going back to 2010, and we'll be able to try all four of those at a time uh, this year and try them side by side. And it's fun to do that because... Um, if you haven't ever done a vertical tasting, it 
even though, and and I have to kind of preface this, not necessarily do these breweries make the same exact beer every year. They do change it. So it's not just a, a way for you to look and see how these beers age over time, um, but it's also uh, kind of interesting just to see how they change up the recipe. Like I remember um, last year when we did the Anchor Christmas Vertical, uh, one of them, I think it was the 09, was really, really very heavy on the cherry and dark fruit notes. And then another one was a little bit um, sweeter. And so anyways, it's just, it's a fun thing to do. And even if you're just going to drink it, the Anchor Christmas beer is always a really great beer. And so I just saw that that's out in stores. So that's good and fun. Stone Brewing also has out their Crime and Punishment. Now this was released a couple of weeks ago and I haven't seen it here in Nevada, but it should be all over the place by now. Um, Crime and Punishment. So it's two different beers. One is the their Lucky Bastard, Lucky Bastard, um, <laughs> that they have put all kinds of fresh chilies in. And then the other one is a much bigger beer. I think the Lucky Bastard is like seven or eight percent ABV. The Double Bastard is the other one, the Punishment, and that one is like 12 percent ABV. And so that's, I mean, the Double Bastard is a big beer to begin with, but uh, now they've added these chilies. And so uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Sometimes those chili beers are kind of fierce, but, um, but it's definitely worth a try. And then, of course, we've got Sam Adams Utopias, which uh, has been out for a couple weeks as well. And probably, if you don't have it already, which it's a $150 to $200 bottle of beer, uh, you're probably not going to find it. But now that it's out and about at your local brew pub, uh, maybe not brew pub, but your local beer bar, they may well have a bottle there. And they usually sell it by the shot. This is a beer, if you don't know about the Utopias, it that is, um, it's really special. It's a beer that's, it's 23 plus percent alcohol. So it it's, can't even really be considered a beer. There isn't any carbonation to speak of. That's, but it's this blended, uh, it's, <laughs> it's this beer that's blended from all kinds of barrel aged. Like they'll take a three year, a, a beer that was, that was aged in like say bourbon barrels for three years and then one that was aged in in port barrels for two years and and it's different every year the way that they blend it together but it's just phenomenal um the first time i had it was probably four or five years ago and it was crazy i don't know if that one was just crazy or if i just was not ready for what i was trying uh, it was very just pure alcohol and, you know, there were like three of us that split a one or two ounce taster of it and it was, it was pretty rough. But then I had it maybe two or three years ago and it was phenomenal. It, it had a lot of these port characters and it was really sweet and, um, and maybe it was just like I said that I, that I knew what I was expecting, um, or knew what to expect, but Anyways, if you see it or if you can find a bottle somewhere, I think it's worth it to just to taste it, just to see what's out there. So um, that's kind of what's already been released. And then there is one more release that I read about that's coming out just after Thanksgiving, so just in a couple of days. Stone's uh, Smoked Porter with Vanilla Bean is coming out. Now this, that's a beer that came out last year, and we were actually able to do a tasting with the, the Smoked Porter original. The smoked porter with espresso beans, and then the smoked porter with vanilla bean. And the vanilla bean was really vanilla-y, so um, it'll be interesting to see how it how it compares this this year. In fact, uh, I think last year when we were doing those the different uh, tastings, we were we ended up kind of combining the vanilla with the regular or with the espresso to the certain amounts, you know, kind of blending our own to make this kind of what we considered perfect uh, smoke porter. But anyways, uh, so that's going to be out later this week, so add that to your shopping list. I just wanted to throw those out there in case in case you didn't know what was happening. It's a, it's a pretty fun time of year for, for all the, the annual releases um, for the holidays coming up, so check those out. And for something not so new but trending like crazy, 
uh, the Craft Brewers Association. Um, there was a couple of articles going around the past week or more, maybe even, um, about they just released a, or did a press release saying that they're they're going to be moving. And uh, their facility, they, they currently are in downtown Boulder, Colorado, and they're going to move to a different facility still in downtown Boulder. But it's going to be twice the size of their current location. So it's, you know, kind of a big deal. It means that craft beer is doing well. But then you look at the sales tag price of this new location, which is supposed to close in April of next year. A whopping four million dollars the Craft Brewers Association is spending on their new location. So I guess uh, maybe craft beer really is doing quite well. <laughs> and one last thing, my own personal beer journey this week. This week I got to try a couple really great beers. Um, really great beers actually. Epic Brewing. I've talked about them before. I feel like I give them all kinds of props, but I really do love them. We have had their Imperial Pumpkin Porter for since early October, probably, and have kind of just been waiting for a time to try it. Well, it's getting close to Thanksgiving, so we thought it was uh, an opportune time to give it a whirl. And it was really, really great. It was not very pumpkin-y at all. Um, it was uh, higher in alcohol, but it just had some really really great flavors there was some oakiness that came through and uh, I don't even know now looking back at it what I could say that would make it sound as amazing as it was but um it, I've seen it it's still on the shelves it would be perfect to drink with uh on Thanksgiving so if you can find it in the next day or so pick it up it's it's a really great beer and I highly recommend it we also tried Dogfish Head 70 Minute IPA, which is, uh, so we've got the 60 Minute, most of you may have heard of, and the 90 Minute. Uh, Dogfish also does the 120 Minute IPA. Now these are all IPAs which have hops added. If I'm not mistaken, the way it works is on the 60 Minute, the hops are added for a, a continuous 60 minutes throughout the boil. Um, which will give it all kinds of layers of hop flavor. Um, when you're brewing, if you the hops that you put in early during during the brewing process will you'll really just get the bitterness that uh, that really acidic uh, astringent quality from that. And then the further on you go, maybe around 30 minutes into brewing, you'll add your flavoring hops. So these are the ones that you're going to start to taste not just the bitterness, but maybe some dirtiness or some skunkiness or, um, you know, some pine or fruitiness. Uh, and then the ones that you add at the very end or in dry hopping are going to be things that you really get mostly just the aroma of. And uh, so anyways, this, you can imagine that this is going to build a layer of hops that or hop layering of flavors and aromas that is really kind of unique and they've and they've done that for years and years uh, but this beer is particularly different because what they do is they take a blend of the 60 and the 90 and then they age them in oak barrels and they I, I the only thing I can imagine is they're they're fermenting it again with maple syrup so the yeast would then eat the maple syrup and uh, and kind of do a second or third fermentation. And then it's also bottle conditioned. So um, it's a really different uh, beer. It's I, I can't say that I would call it an IPA because it's it's a lot more malty, a lot more balanced than I than I would certainly consider an IPA. But it was phenomenal. There were the, there was this vanilla that came through. You got some of the oak coming through. I didn't really. I can't say that there was a a maple syrup flavor, but there was definitely some fruity essence that that was there. And you could you know it was very different from the sixty or the ninety. Uh, if you see this, the seventy five minute IPA from Dogfish Head, pick it up. Have it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know that it's a you know, just 
there's nothing that makes it like, yes, you should have this on Thanksgiving, except for it's just awesome and you should have it whenever you can find it. <laughs> and uh, any a couple others that I recommend for Thanksgiving coming up is uh, Firestone Walker's Double DBA. This is another one of those that's kind of hard to find. The DBA would probably be quite good with Thanksgiving dinner as well, but the Double DBA has that you know, extra oomph and robustness that uh, I, that's in fact what I had with Thanksgiving last year. But this year, I'm going to be uh, drinking the Epic Brewing's Sour Apple Saison. Once again, Epic Brewing, and I think I mentioned this a few uh, newscasts ago, but that Sour Apple Saison is just, it's amazing, and I think it's going to go so well with the turkey. So, those are my picks for your Thanksgiving meal. And you can also, don't forget to check out uh, craftbeer.com's list. That's a really great one as well. And of course, I've got all this posted on the website at thebeerduchess.com. You can email me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have for th with Thanksgiving and what you think about it. Uh, email me at thebeerduchess at gmail.com. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at The Beer Duchess. And don't forget to check out craftbeerhound.com. All kinds of cool stuff for your Christmas list. Check it out. See you next week. Drink some good beer for me.